Hello, my name is Esa Juvonen. I'm a principal program manager from the OneDrive SharePoint platform team, and I'm super excited to talk about our Microsoft 365 Patterns and Practices initiative. The PMP initiative gives you a set of tools, guidance, and, and libraries which will increase your productivity as a developer, architect, IT pro, or even as an end user. So really excited to actually walk through the journey of Microsoft 365 PMP and where you can find our assets which will increase your productivity on your day-to-day -day work. OK, so let's actually get started. You might have been already familiar with Microsoft 365 Patterns and Practices or previously the BMP initiative, but let's actually work through what this is all about. And basically what we created with the BMP initiative is to ensure that we have assets and reusable uh, uh, tooling available for you to help you to move forward within your work. So we all been there with trying to be trying to figure out what is the how to make these things happen or you have a, have a difficult task to actually make or you need to create a web part or a Microsoft Teams tab or something like that and you're trying to figure out how would I do that you read the documentation you don't quite get it and you would like to get some help and that's what the BMP is all about so we really want to build together this this kind of a collective knowledge and co co community knowledge uh, from where we can then get uh, information around how to get started so examples uh, tooling which will increase your productivity helping you to be more successful within your day-to-day -day work so rather building on the collective uh, knowledge of the community which we build together uh, rather than competing between competing with each other or banging your head against the wall on not solving uh, solving the problems what you want to solve now, the BMP initiative has been uh, quite successful throughout the years. We started back in 2014 uh, publicly, uh, one year before actually in general in Microsoft. And right now, if you're looking into the latest numbers, um, it has some massive, uh, it's been a massive, massively successful. So we have already more than 500 samples available to learn uh, and how to learn and extend to, to use Microsoft 365. We have more than 1,300 contributors who have contributed to our open source initiatives, including the documentations and samples which are available. The PMP initiative was actually awarded uh, internally in Microsoft as the reference uh, solution or reference model, how to engage with the communities. And we are true based on that award, award and obviously the learnings are scaling this model even further. Uh, within the last two weeks, we had more than 80,000 uh, visitors in a GitHub repositories under the BMP umbrella, and that includes quite a few repositories. And we're going to talk about during this presentation, how can you find what's relevant for you? We also have more than 42,000 tenants using these open source toolings in the last month, which is a massive number. So there's quite a few different open source tools and components which are available. And from those, um, about they've been used in more than 42,000 tenants. And that number actually keeps on increasing every single month. So it's great to see the adoption uh, growing and growing. We also have our uh, BMP YouTube channel, uh, which had more than 2.8 million watch time minutes within the last 365 days. So there seems to be, uh, just, there is clearly a nice amount of interest uh, on the videos which are getting produced, um, which are basically our community calls, our community demos, also tutorials and all of that is getting released on that YouTube channel on the day-to-day -day basis. So on, I would say in, uh, Approximately, there will be one or two videos every single day released on that YouTube channel, either by Microsoft or by our community members. But really the key point uh, here to remember is to say thank you as the community member who've been active as part of this journey. You are the people who are actually making this community and open source effort possible. We as a Microsoft employees were just facilitating and, and hopefully being helpful and, and helping you to be successful on your contribution journey as well. And contributing and, and obviously from a community perspective and there's multiple ways of contributing. It is around uh, using it is it's around providing comp, uh, feedback or then actually truly contributing in a github site now if you think about the microsoft 365 pmp we kind of think this through with the three different words and those words are being a learn reuse and share so learn being the fact that we provide guidance and assets and reusable let's say tooling which helps you to learn how to extend and use the microsoft 365 
With the reuse means that we provide reusable components, controls, and other script elements and modules which you can use and reuse within your day to day work as so an open source tooling which will make you more efficient and also more uh, product, uh, you will make you more productive. And then the last word was share, and sharing is really key part of this as well because sharing is caring. And that basically means that we are, you as a community member, you are sharing your knowledge for the health of others so that they can be as successful as you are. So rather than like in the intro, rather than every single one of us banging our head against the wall trying to figure out how can I do that, if one of us have already figured it out, we can learn from him or her and then we can actually share and pass it along to a following person who is trying to learn, uh, learn how to do whatever the task is. Now, within those three different uh, elements, let's actually talk about quickly the learn section. I'm going to be relatively fast on this one because we have really cool reuse uh, demos also coming up as well. But if we list quickly all of our different assets which we have available in the learn section, uh, obviously there's a, the official documentation, but we also have two different YouTube channels. So we have the Microsoft 365 developer videos, which is the official channel for Microsoft 365 developer developer guidance and uh, the, some of the community calls. We also have the Microsoft uh, 365 SharePoint community uh, videos, which is more around the community demos, guidance and also non-development uh, videos which will help you to be successful not only as an extensibility or as a developer but also as an end user and administrator so as an example pretty recently well depending on when you're watching this video but pretty recently uh, we had a videos related on how to enable multilingual portals in sharepoint as part of the uh, as part of the guidance released in that youtube channel we have multiple different open source uh, locations. So we have the github.com slash office dev, which is the classic one, github.com slash SharePoint for the SharePoint guidance and github.com slash BMP for all of the open source and community uh, tooling and samples. Um, we've been shuffling slightly the GitHub side of the house, but I think you'll find uh, the, the familiar locations if you've been using this tooling in the past as well. We also have really cool set of sample galleries. We're going to have a look on those as part of the demos as well. So there's a web part galleries and extension and, and list formatting galleries. So you can easily again get access on the relevant sample, which will help you to move forward on your day to day work. And since there's quite a lot of these different locations and AKMS addresses and all of that, which you're going to go through in this presentation, there's only one URL which helps you to get access on all of this goodies which are available for you for free, which is AKMS M365 BMP. And that's actually redirecting to the Microsoft 365 Patterns and Practices a portal or a landing page from where you can actually see then the list of assets and tools and everything else which are available. Now that's all we're going to do today around the learn section. So let's actually move into the reuse and reuse was really around the fact that how do we reuse um, existing assets and existing learnings, what the community have already done. So what are the different components and projects which we are executing as part of the initiative, the BMP initiative? So one of the most maybe known ones pretty recently is probably the lookbook.microsoft.com. And I'm not intentionally, I'm going to skip the demo on this one because we've been demoing the lookbook.microsoft.com quite a lot uh, in the past conferences. So we wanted to actually raise some alternative uh, projects uh, in this time in the in this video recording. But basically the lookbook.microsoft.com, just if you're not familiar what that is all about, it is basically a location where you can go as a tenant administrator and you can actually have a look on Microsoft designed cool looking modern portals from where you can then pick a template and you can apply that to your tenant. So as long as you're a tenant administrator, you can really easily provision as many site collections with cool looking designs and example content, even documents and news articles as part of the templates, uh, which will then help you uh, to understand what's possible with the modern SharePoint and modern portals within your SharePoint. So it is really around speeding up adoption. So you, if you are, for example, a consultant, that might be super useful for pre-sales pre -sales purposes. If you are, let's say, an in-house person and you want to show a cool SharePoint portal for your management chain, you can just provision one from this location and hey, you have a cool looking portal available either from your trial tenant or from even from your production tenant uh, if you are a tenant administrator. 
What's really cool about this as well, uh, it is fully open source. So even the code behind of this application, the lookbook.myself.com, is available as a open source solution. So if you're a developer and you're not interested on co-looking UX, but you would like to understand how you can implement similar kind of tools or you want to enable similar kind of provisioning techniques for your customers, you can actually download the code and have a look on that and adjust that based on your business requirements. Now, moving on on different, let's say, components and assets what we have, let's talk about SharePoint Starter Kit. And we're really excited uh, to start, uh, well, releasing a SharePoint Starter Kit V2, so version two. So we had our original SharePoint Starter Kit uh, released back in, I think it was SharePoint Conference 2018. So it's already two years ago from that. And that was really designed to be a sample reference solution on how to build modern portals using then the SharePoint framework and modern, modern SharePoint experiences. Now the V2, is getting now released or has been released in spring 2020 um, and it has some modern UX uh, design which is based on the lookbook design uh, feeling but also what it has is a completely rewritten uh, set of web parts and what's really cool about the new architecture is that you can actually take these web parts or some of the web parts into a use also in SharePoint 2019 for your so your for on-premises on deployment and also, if only one or two of those web parts are super interesting, which are part of this bigger solution, you can actually install those web parts individually to your tenant. So as an example, you might want to use a web part with the latest emails or my tasks or my upcoming meetings and put that one in the front of the, the your uh, corporate portal, uh, which would show then the personalized information for the user who's accessing the portal. And you now can do that by downloading the solution and installing only the individual web port to your uh, tenant or for your deployment. So really cool stuff and the address is EKMS SP starter kit, uh, which you wanna remember. So let's have a quick look on that one. Just gonna uh, walk through the different assets which are available uh, around the SharePoint starter kit. Uh, so what we're basically doing here is that we're taking advantage of some of the designs which we have available uh, from uh, the lookbook site, but then we have actually decorated uh, the layout for starter kit uh, with this custom web part. So as you can see, out of the box in SharePoint, you don't have a latest emails. Uh, so that is a custom web part, which is available as an open source solution uh, for you as well, as part of the starter kit V2. And um, one of the cool things about these things is that they're actually using Microsoft Craft behind of the scenes. They're accessing your relevant data, your tasks, uh, your news is an out of the box one, but as an example, recent documents out of the box one, but uh, tasks and upcoming meetings are the custom ones. So we're kind of demonstrating how you could be able to build exactly the similar kind of capabilities as we have out of the box uh, within the SharePoint, but as a extensibility. So you as a partner can actually implement these things. As part of the Starter Kit V2, you actually get quite a lot of additional uh, web parts which are available. Uh, so personal calendar, personal email, personal tasks uh, and contacts. Uh, you get uh, additional set of web parts available. And there's even a web parts which are not part of, uh, or they're not visible anymore because they used to be part of the V1. But as the out of the box SharePoint is providing new capabilities, we're kind of hiding some of the, the, the Starter Kit web parts. So all of the Starter Kit assets, and uh, they are available as an open source uh, uh, solution. So if we go to the GitHub, uh, if you go to the GitHub uh, com slash BMB slash SP Starter Kit, uh, we can actually see the, the Git application. Um, and right now, actually, I'm going to go to the V2, which is going to be merged to the master pretty soon. So we can actually see the Starter Kit V2 uh, from here. And we'll give you all of the source code, all of the solutions uh, are ready to go. If you just want to have one of those cool looking web parts like my personal email, relatively typical ask for whatever reason, people want to have the latest emails available in the portal. You can actually come in the in this GitHub repo, download just the SPPKT file, install that to your tenant or first to the test environment, and then verify that it's working and, and all for, and move forward from there. So all of the individual web parts and solutions are now individually packaged so you can take that those into use in your deployments as well now we're releasing completely new pmp core sdk which is targeted to be used in a dotnet core or dotnet v5 so dotnet framework v5 and this is really an abstraction layer for microsoft craft and Azure rest apis which can be used in a dotnet core so the, the really the modern ways of implementing Visual Studio tooling. And what's really cool about this abstraction layer is that you as a developer, 
you don't have to understand graph uh, URLs and the REST APIs. You don't have to understand SharePoint REST APIs. You don't even have to understand is the information available from graph or if it's available from a SharePoint REST. So we haven't have this completely different model or an abstraction layer, which you'll use with supports, for example, uh, link based accessing information, uh, patching and all of that stuff. And you'll have a, a let's say a native more more easier way of doing development because you can do something like dot uh, site dot web dot list dot get me a list and behind of the scenes all of that is getting translated automatically as the rest calls or craft calls and and again you don't have to worry about is it coming from craft is it coming from rest all of that is completely seamless for you as a developer and so this is going to be uh, released as a preview release um, pretty soon well, depending again on when you're watching the video, uh, it is going to be released on May 26th um, to a preview. And the preview is that it actually already works. There's a model, uh, but we will start working with the community openly and extending this uh, library together with you. And then uh, you can actually give us input uh, on what are the areas which are super important for you. And let's focus on then those areas then first and then ship a version 1.0 later this year in 2020. Now let's have a look on uh, the BMP Core SDK in practice and what does it actually mean from a development experience perspective. Now we're using the .NET uh, framework, uh, .NET Core uh, way of doing development in here. And the really the key point of the BMP Core SDK is that when we are accessing information, um, we do not have to worry about, first of all, is are we hitting which REST API or which Craft API, but there's other goodies here as well. So let me actually walk through uh, this one by one from a code perspective. Let me actually run it uh, so we can actually walk through what's happening within the code. And I'm going to zoom in and we're going to have a look on things. I'm going to put actually this small console on the right side, which I'm going to zoom in actually for the relevant information. Let's see if I can actually squeeze it in, uh, in there. That worked really well. Cool. Now, when we actually start using the, the, the BMP Core SDK uh, for .NET Core, uh, we are using uh, always a RESTful API. So it is a Craft API or a SharePoint REST API. So behind of the scenes, the, the, uh, the SDK or library is aware what is the best option to actually execute. So if the best from a best performance perspective execute is to execute through Craft, we're going to execute through the Craft. If the better option is actually that we execute through the REST API in the case of SharePoint, we actually do that automatically as well. And what's really cool about uh, the, the endings uh, and execution. So as an example, when we're executing uh, or getting lists in here, we can actually see the RESTful uh, outputs uh, in the window as well. So let's see if we can actually find it. So here we go, there's a, a call which is actually hitting at the craft endpoint behind of the scenes because by default we are always using the Microsoft craft and I know that yeah it's small and you don't necessarily actually spot uh, the differences but trust me it is the Microsoft craft call in this particular case because we're hitting that un unique URL and then the lists uh, and the unique list URL the craft calls are pretty interesting now what's super uh, cool about the library as well it automatically uses patching behind of the scenes. So in this case, as an example, it is actually patching two different calls automatically uh, or to it. So in a normal development, you would actually hit a one craft call in the REST API and then another one, and then you would do some, some um, uh, shuffling around the data, but we'll package all of that um, a complexity behind of the scenes. You just actually access the information. You can use link way of uh, loading stuff. You can actually say first or default, uh, where the title equals demo one, and we're going to actually load that one, or we're going to create a create a list uh, as well. Now, in this case, uh, we are actually doing a team and share properties primary channels. Let me actually step one more forward, so we can actually see again that it's a craft call to the teams, and then we're getting the information related on the channels of that team as well. Now, what's really really cool uh, also behind of the scenes is that this library abstracts the RESTful uh, interfaces completely. So you can uh, really easily uh, access and build complex, oop, let's actually do that now slightly more nicely, complex link queries and behind of the scenes, all of this is getting translated either against the SharePoint REST APIs or against the Craft APIs. Again, depending on what information is being requested from the object and domain model. 
Now, there's multiple, multiple additional goodies which are available. Uh, we can do batching, we can update, we can add information, we can do async information or operations, we can do non-async operations, again, depending on how do you want this to uh, operate. Uh, if needed, you can, as an example, do batching. So you can batch 20 ads to a single execution, and then that's going to uh, that's going to execute all of that as a one entry. So let's see if I can actually demonstrate that in practice. Let's run all the way through there. Not that one, one more time. Not that one either. Uh, we're executing, executing. There's a lot of actually demos available when we're executing. We're actually building the query over there. And we're hitting the execution marker in any seconds. There we go. No, not that one yet. Ah, oh, there we go. But uh, that's the batching section and running, 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 and operating and testing one more time. And there's the execute async. So we're building the query and the patch, and then we do to execute uh, async. So we can do live executions if we want, or we can build the batch and then execute that as a whole on the right side. It doesn't matter what did we actually execute in this case, but you actually saw a lot of stuff being happening on the wire, so to say, because we were operating multiple sends or ads operation in a single uh, execution. So again, from your development perspective, everything what you need to know is basically just operating with the objects. So let me actually zoom this slightly even bigger. So we can do context.web.lists.add or as an example, context.team and, and channels. And you just load these objects and operate the objects and all of the complexity of the REST APIs is happening automatically for you. Excellent. And let's move to our next uh, component or next asset, which is available for you. So which is the Yo team. So basically Yeoman generator for Microsoft Teams development. So obviously you might have been really familiar with SharePoint framework development. If you come from a SharePoint side, if you don't, uh, you probably have heard about Yeoman generators um, because industries, uh, this is a pretty much industry standard uh, for implementing modern uh, modern web stack development tooling um, unless you're using a CLI but that's a completely different discussion now the Yoma generator anyway uh, the the Yo teams gives you uh, a tooling to generate solutions for the Microsoft team uh, teams so it actually gives you capabilities of creating tabs creating bots creating messaging extensions uh, personal applications and all of that and it is an open source tooling completely so we have a team open uh, which is consists from Microsoft people and also from MVPs and community members building this tooling based on the input what you provide um, it's been actually the usage of this tool has been growing quite significantly uh, within the spring and we can uh, predict that it continues growing in the future as well. Now, you might have actually heard uh, that there was also additional development tooling available uh, and released in the Microsoft build timeframe, which is basically complementing the Yo Teams or Yo Teams is complementing that tooling which was available. So none of these are, uh, let's say, replacing each other. They're just complementing those different uh, developments and personas with, which uh, are available within the world. Now, let's actually have a quick look on the on the Yeoman generator for Teams and what it actually means in practice. And let's call this a sample, a sample solution. I'm going to use the current folder because I'm already in the folder which I want to use. And title of the Microsoft Teams app project is, would be visible for the, for the end user. So let's call this uh, my awesome sample. And your company name, in this case, let's do Contoso, um, which development framework or which version of the manifest we want to use. So basically always when there's a new version of the Teams manifest, we update the Yeoman generator as well. And we're going to use the latest one. Do we have a Microsoft partner ID? That's fine. And this one was the one which I actually really wanted to concentrate on. So Yeoman generator, uh, Yeoman generator for Teams actually gives you a support for creating all of these individual things. And what's really, really cool uh, on the output of this scaffold solution is that it actually works as such. So there's a starting point which you can really easily get to the to go the work in the Microsoft Teams as well. I'm not going to actually do the scaffolding because it takes a while, but basically it doesn't matter if you create a bot or a tab, you are pretty much ready to go to test out the solution. So then it's really the power of the Yo, uh, 
German generator for teams because it is so simple to get started, yeah, especially after a while if you read the documentation. Of course, none of none of us know how to get started if you don't read the documentation, but it is super easy. There's a ready to use guidance, ready to use sample uh, outputting uh, from the German generator. So what do we actually get when we then generate the solution? This is just a super simple solution. It is a one tab solution uh, where we have then the manifest file and manifest available, scaffolded and created for us based on the information which we provided in the Yeoman generator. You can actually see also interesting set of additional tags and interesting set of settings here, which we always keep up to date. Now, I'm not going to deep dive as said on the structures and things, but what I wanted to show that just the default output which is coming from uh, the Yeoman Teams Yeoman Generator is ready to go to be used in Microsoft Teams or in SharePoint, which is actually pretty, pretty, pretty cool. So how we're going to do this uh, is that we're going to use NCROC. Uh, and as part of this solution, we install automatically NCROC uh, libraries. So we're going to make it super, super easy for actually start debugging locally your solution, even though it's actually running in the Microsoft Teams or it's running in the SharePoint side. And what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to run gulp ngroc serve. And what this command actually does in the, in the generator, it regenerates this package with an ngroc endpoint. And we don't have to do anything. Everything is automatic. So we don't have to worry about, well, how do we make, how, do, how do, that will work? How do we make it happen? All of this stuff is happening behind of the scenes. So we're actually starting a web service. We're starting the NROC uh, endpoint. Our host name is now available in internet uh, through this particular URL. And what it means also is that we actually, the solution generator created us an updated hello world zip package because my solution name is hello world, which I can install now in Teams or in the SharePoint app catalog. And let's quickly do that uh, to actually see how easy it is to test this one. So I'm going to use first my Microsoft Teams installation in this particular channel. Nice portal, by the way, uh, which you can absolutely embed on the team as well. Uh, I'm going to go to the apps. I'm going to go to my uh, app catalog in my corporate app catalog. and I'm going to upload my custom app from my local computer. And what I'm going to actually do that, let me actually get the URL or the package. Doesn't matter what are the small things. I'm going to basically upload the zip file the, the app catalog of the teams. And I'm going to slightly actually actually increase this one so I can see what's happening. So I went from apps to the build for M365 PMP and I uploaded my awesome solution, the one which we just created using the Yeoman generator. And the package was regenerated automatically so that when I use my awesome, let's see this in practice. So when I actually use my awesome solution uh, in a in and tap, let's actually do that. We can see that within the Visual Studio Code, we are getting served served uh, our assets from here. And so let's actually make that happen in practice. So if I go to the teams in general, I'm going to add my awesome tab. I should actually find it, but it's probably under awesome. Yes, it is because it's such an awesome tab and I can actually add it to my team channel as an individual tab. And what is really, really cool here I can obviously configure that. This is already coming actually from my local host, so we can actually see the request coming in here. And let's do this one step at a time, side by side. I know that it gets pretty small, but bear with me. So if I actually put here a value or configuration, we actually take that value and also render that as part of the, the served. But what we can see in this side of the window is that our local box is serving that particular piece of code and it actually works properly in the in the Microsoft Teams. That's pretty cool. And um, it actually even gets better. So I can actually go also to SharePoint and by default Yeoman Generator for Teams also generates, if you want, uh, solutions which actually work inside of the uh, SharePoint as well. And what we mean with that one is that that same Hello World package which was under the, the same folder structure, which we just generated. I can track and drop that one to our app catalog in SharePoint online. It's going to uh, prompt uh, the approval of that package because obviously as a tenant administrator or app catalog manager, you need to know what are you installing. I'm going to make it available across, across my organization and it's now deployed. What's really cool, the same solution again, installed in the app catalog of SharePoint. And if I now go and create a new page 
add a page. Let's do a plant page and create a page. And now we should see our awesomeness. Uh, oh, that's not to typo. Awesome stuff here. There's my awesome. There's the configuration options the same way as it is in the SharePoint in the team side and voila are exactly the same implementation is available in a SharePoint uh, SharePoint side. Great and then the, the last kind of an asset of what we wanted to this time talk about in the PMP session if, you, if you've seen us talk about PMP in the past you've seen uh, the structure of what we do but there's so many goodies available so we need to choose just a subset which we can actually show. So this time what we wanted to actually mention uh, is really about the samples and solutions which are available in the GitHub for you because there is more than 500 samples on the different areas of Microsoft 365 development and um, some of them are older sample for maybe Maybe for uh, adding model. Some of them are for Microsoft Teams. Some of them are for list formatting, which are more power user samples. So enabling list extensibility with a uh, see uh, see some uh, configuration or JSON configuration configuration, so to say. But basically, there is a different level of solution and demonstrating different kind of concepts and and the complexity of this solution also vary um, in the demo we can actually have a look on slightly complex solution but there are much more simplified solutions available as well and as you can see from the slide we kind of walk through some of these galleries in the demo as well there's quite a nice galleries available so you can actually find the relevant sample for you so you don't have to go to the github and start finding throughout the github repos what's relevant for you there's a nice looking portals available which helps you to find the relevant sample, hopefully unblocking your day-to-day -day work. So let's have a look on what's available on the sample side. We have multiple different sample galleries, the samples and solutions, and there are basically categories and lists available. So from here, you can access all of these galleries. But from the galleries, what you actually get is, for example, samples for web parts and SharePoint framework web parts which you can then access and view from a multiple different perspectives. So the same samples, for example, based on the version of the SharePoint framework which they've been built on, or same samples based on the compatibility and which of them actually work in the Microsoft Teams because SharePoint framework web parts work in the Microsoft Teams as well, which we're going to see in a second as well. And um, we also have SharePoint framework uh, extension sample gallery where you can actually go and based on the ex extension type, you can find an application customizer or you're looking list view common heads, you can scroll down and have a look on what kind of samples are available. And obviously, whoever contributed, we will clearly call out who has, who's the MVP like Paolo or Simon or Anup, uh, who, who've been contributing the samples. Well, not necessarily an MVP, but a community member who have actually shared the sample. Now, some of these are actually from Microsoft employees as well. We also have really cool uh, list formatting samples. Uh, so we have uh, column, for, uh, column formatting samples and view formatting samples. And this basically gives you the capability of modifying SharePoint lists and library renderings. And there is, I think there's more than a hundred sample already available. And it is really around the fact that it empowers the power user, not just developer, but you as a power user, you can go to a list, you can modify the list rendering using a, a JSON, a CS, JSON uh, files and then basically paste that to the list rendering um, and that's going to change the rendering of the list. So really, really cool stuff as well and plenty of samples available. Also a lot of videos available about this one in our YouTube channel. Now we pretty recently started also, also working on the Teams dev samples, community samples. So we're collecting now more and more community samples to the BMP as well. This, this doesn't yet have a gal uh, gallery in it, but it will be there uh, after the initial release, um, depending again when you're watching the video uh, and the demo video. Now, this time we can actually quickly have a look on the Leads LLB solution. This is um, an example of a reference solution. So a lot of the samples are simple, but some of them might be slightly more complex. And the lead solution is one which is quite complex one, um, but it, it actually is a really, really great demo. And so I'm going to walk through what this is. I'm going to touch uh, the different scenarios, uh, how the leads application lead solution actually works. So the lead solution uh, is a SharePoint framework solution. So what it means is that you can actually use it in multiple different platform as well. Almost like we did with Teams, tabs can be used in Microsoft Teams and in SharePoint. The SharePoint framework solution can be used in Microsoft Teams and SharePoint as well, which might be confusing, but again, there's a multiple differences which one of these you would like to use in practice. But let's concentrate on this particular scenario. So the lead solution itself 
you can actually expose that in the SharePoint as an individual application page. So if I go to the leads in here and actually create a page based on that, we can see that we are actually having this application page um, in SharePoint, which has taken the full page. Um, so let's call it that page 12. So I'm not overlapping with anything else. And you can see that the individual solution is taking the full page uh, and it's listing leads from the leads management system. And you can also filter down what kind of solutions and filtering uh, you want to see. For example, the required attention, you'll see a less of those leads and, and most probable is a different kind of leads. And then clicking these, you could actually open up a the leads management system. Right now it doesn't do that. Now, because it's a web part or a SharePoint framework solution, you can absolutely expose that in any page as well. So you can basically just create a page. Let's, oop, let's create a plank page. And in here, let's actually add the leads uh, solution to this page. So the lead solution, they're available. Um, you can configure that. Let's get rid of that one. You can configure that based on the settings. Uh, it is now in the demo mode, so it actually shows uh, some content automatically. But again, pretty cool to experience. It is a, oops, I need to give it a name, the debates, and let's publish that. So it is a web part, so it adapts on the page. Um, you can actually configure that based on the settings as well. Well, that's pretty cool. And pretty recently, we then almost actually or a year ago, we enabled the leads to be also available in the Microsoft Teams as a tab. So again, the same piece of code. You didn't have to recompile, you didn't have to uh, do anything for this code as a SharePoint framework solution, and it actually works in the Microsoft Teams as a Microsoft Teams as a tab as well. And we actually automatically host it for you. You don't need to worry about even hosting or deployments or optimization. Everything is completely automatic. I'm not going to deep dive how and where, but that's just natively within a SharePoint. What's really cool since the SharePoint framework 1.10 and the lead solution actually shows that one as well, uh, you can actually have the leads also as a personal application. So you can actually even in that solution to the left panel of the Microsoft Teams, and then you can actually have multiple different views to the same data. So it's most probable reason commended uh, leads and, and work on the on the leads data. You can have a settings tab there. You can configure the different options and settings uh, related on that particular solution. That's pretty cool as well. Now, the following thing is not yet available uh, openly when I'm even recording this video. So depending on when you're actually watching the video, this might be available or might not be available. So let me actually open up the right uh, location and it's this one in here. And this one I'm actually running in our eDoc environment because this doesn't yet work uh, in the in the any of the other environments, but it's coming pretty soon. Again, the lead solution is here. Uh, when the leads web part, and there we go, we have the leads web part, but starting with the upcoming SharePoint framework version, you can actually also build messaging extensions. And messaging extensions are something which actually work together with the bots. And you can actually see those individual leads in the discussion. So I can actually have a discussion with, uh, hey, Joe, can you share the, share the relevant, if I can write, relevant leads um, and then somebody can actually reply on the discussion. Uh, I know that it's pretty small. Let me actually slightly bump up the font so I can actually go and say here it is. And I can actually start a messaging extension and in the same way as with the web part, as with the tab, as with the personal application, we can actually expose the same piece of code um, and same implementation, but we enable that to be a messaging extension from where you can then select the relevant lead and I can click that one. Let's see that it's a came controller 3300. I click that one. It's actually taking that lead and putting that one in the discussion. So now the came controller 3000 is a messaging extension as part of the discussion uh, of what you're having together with your uh, employees or with your colleagues which is basically there included in there and that's pretty cool and that works up to the level of actually you can have those messaging discussions in the bot implementation or you can have those messaging discussions inside of your personal application so in this case the leads solution 
Again, it has the new leads, the normal that you look and feel. It's a personal application, but it also has a chat where I can have a, a messaging extensions fired up and I can select the discussion. I can have a discussion about the lead together with a bot or potentially with the external uh, employee, well, other employees within your company. So that's all of the samples and kind of a technical or let's say developer on the oriented stuff. Uh, well, some of the samples are not just for developers. Maybe they are, some of them are for IT pros as well in the, our sample gallery. But uh, one of the really new cool things uh, which we have relatively recent, recently started also doing is some Microsoft 365 community docs. And this is really uh, for those people and community members who feel more natural about writing guidance, not just development guidance, but non-development guidance. So kind of practices and governance learnings and, and stories from the real world. Um, and the intention of this one really is, is to collect again the common knowledge of the community to have one centralized location rather than have it um, cross the internet in the individual blog post and absolutely you can still do your blog post and write your stuff in blog post but some of those blog posts might be suitable in the centralized location as a story as an article and obviously all of the people who are contributing in here uh, will get credited and, and called out by microsoft in our public uh, messaging as well. So I, I strongly encourage if you, even though you wouldn't actually have the, let's say, development skills or IT pro scripting skills, you would actually contribute on this initiative, which is growing and, and there's a good amount of community members actually writing awesome stuff uh, in this location as well. As we started going through the reuse section uh, within this presentation, I said that there's so many items, so many initiatives running uh, what we do within the BMB, and, and, and that's definitely true. This is the nine things which we didn't have a time to go through. Now, again, there's a lot of assets, there's a lot of projects available. How can I remember all of this AKMS addresses and all of the things where I can access things? And, and as, as mentioned, we want to make this as easy as possible for you. You have a one URL to remember, which is AKMS M365 BMB, and you can see the welcome page actually on the screen as well. So that's basically what you find. And from there, you can then find all of the links to our guidance, community goals, samples and solutions to SDKs and tools. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible for you. If you don't like something, by the way, give us feedback. If you have an idea, how can we help you even more? Give us feedback. So because we exist here basically for you. So making your life as easy as possible. Now, the final section, what we actually want to go through was the share. So BMP is all about learning, reusing, and then sharing. And the sharing part, we always kind of cover the fact that you can contribute. Um, and there's a lot of people who are contributing. So in the following slide, you'll see all of the people who contributed during 2020. And we're talking about people who contributed by, is it 14th of May when we're recording this video. Um, so a lot of people are actually contributed already at this time. I can't remember, was it 200 people already? But you can see the list of uh, names on the slides. And I think I used eight pixel font uh, on the slides. Just make sure that everybody can fit it in. And also we have more than uh, 40 different companies uh, which have contributed already or let their employees to contribute to our open source asset, open source projects. And that's super important as well. So these companies are giving their own employees the opportunity to participate to this BMP open source assets and, and then contribute back uh, based on based on the, the the learnings what they have from their day to day work. So thank you for that one as well. Now, one of the new things what we're doing also in 2020 is that we are growing uh, the so-called BMP team. The BMP team is the set of MVPs and Microsoft employees who actually coordinate uh, the work what we do within the open source side. And right now, I think we had 26 people uh, in this team, uh, which consists from MVPs and Microsoft employees across the world. And we're looking into further extending this team in the future as well, because and the only way we can scale or make even more awesome tooling and projects available is by scaling, growing the team, getting more MVPs involved, getting more community members involved. So if you're interested on, on being more closely involved, please contribute, be part of the projects, uh, be active on the projects, and then you will potentially get nominated to be part of the team in the future. Like said, Please do get involved. Um, AKMS M365 is to address, to get access and seeing all of our projects uh, which are available. Um, and by engaging within these projects, you can actually help other people to be successful as well. And hopefully kind of pay back also if the project has given to you any value for your day-to-day -day work.
And just kind of recapping, it is really around the fact that uh, we have those three different words, learn, reuse, and share. And that's the really where we are, where we, how we're thinking uh, the Microsoft 365 PMP. We want to provide you guidance, samples to be more efficient within your work. We want to give you reusable components, controls, and tooling so we can increase your productivity. And then we want to give you an opportunity to share and to be part of the community by contributing uh, together to this global initiative uh, where we help each other within the, within the internet. But that's all we can actually talk about today. So thank you for watching and hopefully find the content interesting. Thank you.